going to explore using our list in order to do a number of things. Uh, one thing I want to do is kind of just go through and let's let's look at the list. If you press stat on your calculator, um, there's a number of things that show up. We're going to look at the, the edit menu. If I hit enter on edit, and it's going to take me to my list menu. And by default, you have six lists that you have access to. And you just kind of keep scrolling until you get to one through six. I also had the option of naming and introducing my own lists, but that's for another tutorial. You can enter values, and I have some values already entered because sometimes it takes a long time uh, to enter a lot of different values. So what we're going to do is what can we do with our lists? So first thing I want to talk about is some of the statistics that we would use the lists for. So I've got some data put into L1 and L2. I'm going to go over, I'm going to press stat again. We're going to explore a little bit more about the edit menu, then we're going to do some calculations. Sort A, sort D. That's about what it sounds like. Sort ascending, sort descending. So if you wanted to put the numbers in numerical order, say for you wanted to find uh, medians, uh, the IQR, your quartiles, these are, this is really nice, very useful, very quick. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go down to sort A. I hit enter and it's asking me now to, which list would you like me to sort. So if you look down, 1 through 6 contains your 1, uh, 1 through L6. So I'll hit enter and I'll tell it to sort that. It'll say it's done. Let's go back and look at it. And now we can see that my values are in fact in numerical order. And I can scroll down. If I wanted to find the median value, I can just scroll down. I can find out exactly I have 10 numbers. I can go back to the very last number and the uh, L1, the 10th entry is 99. And so in terms of finding a median value, I know that it's going to be the average of the 5th and 6th number. And so that will be easy. So if I add 85 and 86, what's halfway between those? 85.5 is going to be my median. And so that was real simple, real quick way of using uh, your list just to find positional values like the median or even your quartiles. Something else that's nice, um, what happens if I come up here and I actually hit the delete button? It doesn't even ask me if I want to delete. It's gone. L1 is now officially gone. Did I delete all of my values? It allows me to have six lists total. You saw here, it asks if I go back and press over one. It's asking me to name a list and create a new one because I only have five lists showing. But I really would like to reinstate that list. I'm, I'm hoping all my numbers aren't deleted. If you press stat and you go down to setup editor, if I hit enter, it's going to say hit execute that, that command and it'll say done. If you'll go back now and you look at your list, they have been restored to their default setting, meaning L1 through L6 is going to be there. Um, it does not delete a list. You must physically give it the command to clear the list out before it actually deletes the content of the list. Let's look at our calculate feature on, on lists. So one variable stats, super useful. Uh, we're going to hit enter. It's waiting for me to tell it which list to use. Now I can tell it one thing and we can hit enter automatically without doing anything else and boom it's going to give us all the statistics based on list number one. That's the default list. If you don't tell it which list it automatically goes to that one. So you have your average which is 84.8. You have the sum of all the x values. That's nice. You have uh, the sum if I had squared all the values and added them up then that's the sum of the squares. The S sub X, this is my standard deviation for the sample that I had. If for some reason I knew that I had typed in the entire population, then this would be my standard deviation of the population. Those are two, these S sub X and Sigma sub X, these are actually two versions of standard deviation, sample and population. N is my sample size, that's exactly what I remember, you had 10 numbers in the list. You see you've got the down arrow. What that's telling you is you have more information below. If I press enter at this point, I won't be able to see what's below that. So I'm going to go ahead and press down, and it's going to keep scrolling until the arrow disappears. There, the arrow's gone. That means I'm at the bottom of the list. Now you see the arrow at the top saying, hey, you've got stuff up here. Here you see the minimum, 
Q1, that's my first quartile, that's 25%. Median, that's 50%. Q3, that's 75%. And of course, my maximum value. These are what we call the five number summary. These are super useful in terms of um, creating box plots and understanding outliers and things like that. And so um, that's what one variable stats gives you. If I go back and look at this again, I have two variable stats. Now, we haven't explored this a whole lot yet, but I have L1 and L2 in my lists. So I'm going to tell it here, I want to create two variable stats. And Since I've used L1 and L2, now if I hadn't used L1 and L2, or maybe I'm looking at one variable stats, and I want to tell it to do something different. Maybe I'm using L2, uh, comma, L3. Now I won't do this because I don't have anything in L3. But that's how you would tell it to do a different list. I'm going to go back and delete those because I don't want those. I want it to use the default lists, L1 and L2, so we'll delete those lists, um, and we'll hit enter. This one gives us a little bit different. Um, I have two different lists. Um, here's my X. So X list, the X variable, is going to be the first list. The Y variable would, of course, be your second list. So this would be if, in case you had a scatter plot, you had two variable data, and you wanted to find out information about that two variable data, there's some really cool things you can look at. It's got the same information for L1 that we had before, but it's also got the same information in terms of it's calling the second list the Y variable, but it's got the same thing, the average of the Y's, the sum of the Y's, the sum of the squares, and you'll find the same exact things with a few additional pieces. Here's the sum of the products, and it's going to go down. It's going to go ahead and give me my X min, X max, Y min, Y max, and those are the two variable stats. So kind of the same thing, but it does give a little bit different stuff. So if I had to do two variable statistics, I wanted to find the sum, I could do the two variable stats and skip a step rather than having to do one variable stats twice. Something else that's very useful in a list, we can have our lists calculate things for us. Let's suppose that this is my final exam grade, and I wanted to create a list of things, and this is this is my this is a, a class, um, and you wanted to be able to plug these numbers into a formula and have it all work all at the same. So you want to be able to do ten problems in one stroke. This is how it works. See how I've gone up to the top? I've pressed up until I got to the top of the list, and the name of the list is being highlighted. Let's suppose that. Um, let's just suppose we're going to use this and we wanted to plug into a formula saying um, 0.3 times the number in the, or I would say 3 times the number in the first list, we're going to choose L1. And close my parentheses, let me go back and put that decimal in. So if I've forgotten something, this is a nice little tip, I've forgotten something, I want to insert it, you press second and the INS is insert. What it'll do is it'll turn it to a blank and it's going to blink and I can type in something and it's going to shift it down to the right without deleting it. Also a nice little feature. It will continue to insert until you press to the right and then it turns back into your regular cursor. And so let's just say we do 0.3 times the first list. Let's add this. Let's add the second list into it. So or we'll just add, let's just add a number. We'll add plus 50. Okay, and so what it's going to do is it's going to multiply the number in the first list, it's going to add 50 to it, and it's going to stick it in the same exact position in the third list. So I'm going to hit enter, and I just did calculations, all 10 of them, without having to do the first one by hand. Okay, now you're, this can get complicated, but it's all depending on how you define the list up top. Um, in statistics, we use this feature a good bit especially if we have to do a lot of calculations. This helps save lots of time. So that's your lists. There's a lot of other things to do, but they're a lot more complicated, and we'll take care of those in a different video.